my bid on Snow Leopard. Especially now since WWDC has come and gone, and there's a whole lot more information that has been revealed, especially about a lot of the technologies that are going to be present within Snow Leopard. Along with all the information out there, I hope that I can contribute something. I'm not going to have this to be a super geeky technical video, but I will at least try to explain some of the principles behind the technologies. And those two technologies that I would like to discuss are Grand Central and OpenCL. I think the biggest misconception that I am reading in articles and hearing and seeing in videos is about Grand Central. Now, many are, attri are, are attributing a better handling of multiple processors, and multiple threads, so on and so forth. Lots of these technologies that I've discussed in my Behind the Bit video. The reality of it is Grand Central is not the actual arbiter or how should I put it because I have to be very delicate with my words. Grand Central is a tool for developers to help make their code multi-thread aware. It is not an improvement in terms of the system itself and in a, as in working with multiple cores. So, to reiterate, Grand Central is a programming tool. It is not an actual, here's an improvement of how we handle multiple cores and things like that, and that type of technology. When I was discussing multiprocessing in an older vid of mine, Leopard and Tiger were already really there in being multi-core aware. Things that you would improve on are your scheduling and interrupts and things like that, balancing out, but Grand Central is not targeting that. Grand Central is targeting developers and saying, you've got all this power, let's use it. Much of what I was really saying in my Behind the Bit video where software needs to be put into a situation where it could run in parallel or run across multiple cores to try to get the most amount of power out of what's in your machine versus just having it be a, ta a simple task and then simple tasks are shuffled amongst cores and things. So this is a technology really designed for the future of OS X. It is a, it is a very, I, I think it's quite a neat concept that Apple's come up with because there is some truth in what they were saying that it is a cumbersome process and at many times very difficult to debug code when you're dealing with multiple cores, multiple processors, multiple threads. It just I'm not going to, we don't need to get into the whole difference between the, the terminology, but the, just think of a thread as a, an access point to a CPU resource. So, much of what I had also stated in my Windows 7 and Snow Leopard video, talking about Windows 7 improvements of multi-core aware, much of what they did in that aspect is not so much a tool, but they actually did improve on much of what their system, how it was behaving, especially when they had meant user space threads to kernel threads. The difference here between what Grand Central is doing Grand Central is, is, is really putting programmers who choose to use it in a more easier, friendlier atmosphere to say, hey, I'm going to break up this logical process and this logical process of my application so it can be split. And Grand Central provides the syntax and all of the logistics basically to get your application to do that. Now, the real question is when you upgrade, how many of your applications are ready to talk to Grand Central? most of them are not going to be. Now what the the programs that come native with Snow Leopard obviously and I hope will be uh, coded to communicate with Grand Central because Grand Central does require its own little scheme and saying here this is my my code put it as Apple st states it's going to be put your code's going to be put into a block and the block's going to go into a queue basically then sit off to whatever appropriate available resource there is. Uh, deemed by Grand Central. That doesn't mean that one can't program their application 
to be multi-core aware already because we already have some applications that do use multiple threads and they do have to manage their own locks and basically a, a simple way of putting it that you, you grab hold of a CPU, CPU resource or let's just say a resource and you make sure that no one else steals that resource or mismanages that resource sometimes I can like I said before can be can be a little bit cumbersome in that process nonetheless there are many many applications out there that do do this process so one could ask in Snow Leopard can a programmer continue to use the original means of being multi-core aware for instance I would give you there are very powerful applications I would say some database applications that run on Windows that like to use fibers private little custom ways of using threads to get to the CPU resource and at many times that can ignore the system and they do that for faster performance is Snow Leopard going to allow developers to continue to use other means of accessing CPU or CPU resource while others can be using Grand Central or is a question or is the answer to the question no everything for our multi-core aware or multi-threaded applications will go through Grand Central so allow me to elaborate a little bit more to differentiate Grand Central from just multi-processing because I know many of you are saying well it is going to help out with X, Y, and Z, and so on and so forth. The reason why I use the word tool is that Apple could have simply improved the way Snow Leopard manages multiprocessing. I'm already, like I said previously, to some of the things I've already heard, going to assume that. Similar to like Windows doing with their thread management. The tool part comes in, and the difference there is that it could have just stopped right there and said, we have, we have better multiprocessing capabilities. Boom, end of story. It's just that Apple did one up from that. They said, not only are we going to improve the whole multiprocessing within the system, we're going to make a means for our developers of making their applications and the software from the OS on up run better under multiprocessing. So let's make a system for that to happen. Call it Grand Central Dispatch and boom. So I hope that clears the difference in what I'm talking about when I say it's a tool. Because a huge part of it, beyond just saying we're going to improve the way we use multiprocessing, boom they added the whole system to support developers to use Grand Central Dispatch. The, but that still begs the question, if you don't use Grand Central and you decide to use traditional means of accessing or dealing with multiprocessing, what happens? So that's what I'm trying to clear up. Let's talk about the whole 64-bit component. Finally, Apple has a 64-bit 100% system and there's no more 32-bit system so this comes into question or a lot of you are going to be asking about performance this is the real big thing that I would like to see when it's when it's released how are 32-bit apps using 64-bit pointers going to behave it's something that Microsoft has had to deal with because quite frankly you're essentially bloating the amount of resources used and times where the, the, your system has to work with a larger packet or heap, if you will, than would need be under a 32-bit pointer, so on and so forth. So I'd like to see how that behaves because many of you may not even see performance gains and many of your applications are still written in 32-bit. I'm expecting most of Snow Leopard and all their native applications to be written in 64-bit, but that may not be the case. I don't have confirmation, but we'll see. If that's the case, I do know that the finder has been rewritten, so I'm going to assume that the finder is going to be using Grand Central and all the new technologies and therefore be a fully 64-bit feature. I don't want to call it an application, but feature set within 
Snow Leopard, along with anything else, I'm really going to assume if it's coming with Snow Leopard, it's in 64-bit. The other part is OpenCL. Now, OpenCL is something really that's Apple's baby, and I, I like the concept of it. Okay, I, I had a lot of questions when I first started hearing about OpenCL. And I will say at this point, from what I know, I do like the concept. But a lot of things are going to come into question. Because GPU memory, many times, are, uh, are private. And what I mean by that, managed by the GPU. And you can't always talk to uh, CPU RAM and GPU RAM in the same fashion. Now, I know OpenCL is going to be the standard for this. Um, and I do know that you can work with OpenGL, for instance, the pre-rendering process and then post-rendering process if, if it's something used in a handshake with OpenGL. Many applications can take benefit of OpenCL, but you guys are not going to see those benefits unless the app is written to take advantage of OpenCL. So then the question that comes in hand is how much natively is written that's going to come with Snow Leopard that will take advantage of OpenCL and then how many developers are going to get on that bandwagon and get their apps out there to run and use OpenCL or even Grand Central for that matter. So OpenCL, what I like about it is that Apple sees the potential power. A lot of the technology that I was talking about in my Behind the Bit video uh, where it's a, like a small, a smaller version of massive parallel processing where your instructions for the purpose of like if it's a vector or or forensic calculation that you need whatever you're going to send it up in OpenCL OpenCL will assign it to the GPU into well, let's just call it a stack a buffer area where it's going to wait and then boom the instructions fall in the GPU is ready and then they cut across in, in, in parallel so you get much faster times Again, those resources need to be used and the applications have to be written for it. Now, that said, how many apps do we actually have right now, today, that are really written in 64-bit? There, there are quite a few, but I know that a lot of the apps that we use on a day-to-day -day basis are not. Now, browsing and things like that, mail, I'm expecting all those to be natively within Snow Leopard, but if you are using other applications, the question does become, when will that company decide to possibly rewrite it? Hey, let's use OpenCL here. Hey, let's use Grand Central here. So on and so forth. So a lot of what is very good about Snow Leopard is that it is an operating system for the future. It's an operating system for the future, and I know I can hear the Mac versus PC debates now about, oh, this and that, and look and look. Both Microsoft and Apple, Microsoft had to deal with a lot of problems and issues that plagued Vista and had to overcome them, ideologies, so on and so forth, to bring Windows 7. Apple's view has always been an incremental evolution of their operating system. And this overhaul, increment, to me, is a major feat in going 64-bit and actually taking the time to make something like OpenCL, spearhead OpenCL, create a technology called Grand Central and say, you know what, guys? OS X is going to be a fantastic operating system to develop for. We've got all these tools. Because I don't know of anything in Microsoft that is the equivalent of Grand Central to help developers say, hey, use this system within our system. I know that they've improved in thread management things within Windows 7. But I don't, I don't know of an alternative to Grand Central within Windows. doesn't mean that they may not come up with one. And they may take a different approach to it altogether. Obviously, Apple and Microsoft have, have always had drastic opinions and approaches towards technology. So we'll, that's something that we'll, we'll have to see. But it is quite an achievement, I think. It's, it's innovative. Someone... Th Grand Central and OpenCL, to me, are, is a lot of thinking. Because, really, a lot of you, if you research it, Apple spearheaded this idea, submitted the proposal, worked with AMD and Intel and a few others, and boom, they're making this standard. 
they're sitting there and saying, man, let's tap in into that resource, getting into more of a parallel type processing environment, and we can help our developers in our applications, our operating system for a better computing environment. Same thing with Grand Central. They actually sat there and said, well, and I, I really wonder though, when they were rewriting Finder or, or something for uh, OS 10, did, did, did they have a consensus and say, man, this is really becoming problematic in us making everything multi-core aware. Let's just make something easier for us to use for ourselves and other developers and bam, Grand Central comes about. It's kind of like the Windows uh, Desktop Manager, the way that Vista and Windows 7 have changed the way that they handle their graphic e APIs and stuff. So anyway, I hope that answers the question. So Leopard is a, going to be a great operating system, and the Windows 7 I have the release candidate also looks to be a very big improvement and looks to be a good operating system as well from my opinions uh, on the previous Windows 7 video that I had. So we will have to see. I do not expect a whole lot of performance gain out of Snow Leopard for most of our applications. I really am going to be excited to see the first applications come off the line that use Grand Central and OpenCL. That's something I'm very excited to see. Maybe something that I myself dabble in if I have the time. Or better yet, a customer that comes to me and says, look, we want to use this, we want to use OS X. We want to uh, embrace those technologies. Bam, I think that's, that's something that's very exciting. So I hope that suffices. If you have any other questions or you want me to go in detail about anything else, please let me know. Thanks for watching.